So if you guys saw him about a month and a half ago, I made a video talking about how I switched over to Linux from Windows just because there were a few things that were just kind of annoying me about it and because I, I was kind of bored and I just wanted like a challenge kind of. That's running games in Linux. It's getting a lot better, but it still is kind of like doing it on hard mode, you know what I mean? Like, it's not 100% as easy as just booting up Windows and playing games, but I'm someone who likes to mess around with things and get things working and, like, do a ton of work to do this, just because, I don't know, it just makes, it f makes me feel a lot more, like, accomplished when I actually get a game working and I'm able to play it. So, anyway, here we go. On my screen here, I have my desktop. I got, uh, Steam. So, a lot of people say that you know, you can't play any games in Linux and all the games don't work, which if you're really into first person shooters and battle royale games, those are basically the main two that have issues. I would say you probably be best sticking to Windows, at least for now. They are doing some work trying to get uh, BattleEye and Easy Anti-Cheat working, which if both if Easy Anti-Cheat gets working, then you could play Apex Legends and Fortnite, at least. And then BattleEye, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to then play like Call of Duty Modern Warfare and just games like that. So right now, if you play those kind of games, you're kind of out of luck, but showing on my screen here, I only have 14 games that do not work at all as far as I know. These ones here kind of work, you have to run them through Wine Steam, which is a little bit different than Proton, and then all of these just work right out of the box. So this is a lot of games. Burnout Paradise Remastered actually does not work, it's like the only game, uh, it's the only new EA game that was released like last week or two weeks ago that does not work in Linux, and of course it's the one that I got, so that's great. Um, I'm waiting on a refund for that, I'm not actually 100% sure if I can get one because I have 8 hours, but literally all 8 hours were just me turning it on because you basically get stuck in the loading screen and it doesn't do anything. I waited there for like 8 hours just to see if something would happen and nothing did. So hopefully they'll let me get a refund on it, but it's not really that big of a deal if they don't, because I could always just switch over to Windows and play it. Anyway, yeah, all of these games here, so I have 67 games that just work. So that's really cool, and I only have 14 that don't. Some of these up here probably don't work, but these are just random, like, free-to-play games or games that I got, like, like, 10 cents that I just never play. So I just have them in like a don't care category. Uh, VR games, most of the ones that I have work, but my headset doesn't. Which that brings me over to this. So basically there's a project called OpenHMD, and it's just open sourced VR headset drivers. And right now they're working on getting uh, 6DOF or 6 Degrees of Freedom working right now, which if you look in devices, I don't think any of them actually support it. Yeah. Except for, I'm pretty sure Nolo does, yeah, that's like the only thing that supports full tracking. Uh, but they are very close to getting positional tracking for all of these. Uh, and right now the Rift S doesn't exactly work, but uh, this guy over here to the left, Jan Schmidt, uh, if you look on his Twitter here, he actually has been working for the past like about month, I mean he's probably been working on it more, um, but I've been seeing in the past about a month he's actually gotten a very early version of the Rift S drivers working, uh, which is really cool because it's a lot different than all the other headsets because it doesn't use base stations, it actually uses cameras inside the headset. So it's obviously going to be a little bit different uh, getting that to work, and it's probably going to be more difficult, but it's the one that I have. so. Uh, I don't have it downloaded right now, but a couple weeks ago, like right when he talked about it, I think it was about two weeks ago, yeah right here, June 6th, I went and downloaded the uh, really early version of the driver, and I was actually able to do one of the demos. It doesn't work with Steam VR yet, so I wasn't able to play like Project Cars 2, but once that gets working with Steam VR, then any game that you don't have to walk around for will work. So if they can get the controller position tracking, which probably won't be for a while, then you could technically play Beat Saber, even though it would be a little bit weird not being able to move around. But you'd be able to play like Project Cars 2, Assetto Corsa, games like that where you're just kind of sitting down and looking around. So that's really cool, and I'm really excited for that because um, being able to play VR games will just be one less thing that I need to use Windows for. So, shout outs to this guy, because he's been doing a lot of work on this in the past couple weeks, getting it basically completely built 
from nothing because a couple weeks ago this didn't even exist um or at least like none of it worked so uh yeah shout out to him but yeah so for the games here that don't work um which are a couple of them basically all the games up here most of the newer call of duties and like things like warzone basically how i do that is i run it through a virtual machine so if i open up a uh, virtual machine manager right here you can see i have android x86 i was just kind of messing around with that but i have a windows 10 machine right here uh, which if I open this up, I'm not actually going to run it because I have to like switch inputs and do a ton of stuff like that. Um, but right here, I basically have a whole virtual machine running inside my computer. And I have a NVIDIA 1050 Ti plugged into it, which I'm going to try to upgrade my GPU. I'm thinking of getting like a RX 5600 or something like that. Uh, so if I do end up getting one of those, then I can swap the RX 580 out for that and pass through the 580 so that'll give me much better performance because the 1050 is not really the greatest for games in 2020 uh, so most games I have to run on the lowest possible settings but I mean it lets me play a couple more games it lets me play VR things like that without having to shut down my computer and restart it and do all that which is really annoying the only issue with this is that I had to do some workarounds getting it to work so normally it would split up your graphics cards into different they're called io mmu groups uh but just the way that my motherboard is set up that doesn't work so i had to get a custom kernel which would then have the patch to manually separate them and after that everything just kind of worked it wasn't as difficult as it sounds literally you have to go into this and remove software. I'm on Manjaro by the way. On my other video I was using Ubuntu but I switched over just because I've heard a lot of good things about Manjaro and this is what I've been using for about a month so I'm really happy with it. But then what I'm using is Zen VF VFIO is what it's called. This right here. This is a custom kernel which gives you slightly better performance in some games. Uh, basically takes out all the extra junk that you don't need for just running the desktop and and also has the uh, the patch that lets you separate all of the um, groups and everything. So literally you just have to install that, restart your computer, and you're good, and then you can do it. Uh, so it's not exactly rocket science. It's not as difficult as it sounds, at least if you're on Manjaro or any other Arch-based distro. If you're on Ubuntu or something like that, it might be a little bit more difficult, but I'm not sure. Yeah, with that all out of the way, main reason why I kind of want to make this video is just to give, like, my experience with using Linux and if I would recommend it. So, kind of like what I said before, if you play games like FPS games or Battle Royale, you're probably not going to have that much luck with Linux, at least as it is currently. I mean, it is obviously getting better, and like all these games here, if you play anything before, I think Black Ops 2, they'll just work 100%. Actually, I think Advanced Warfare, yeah, that's the newest one that works. Uh, but all of the newer Call of Duties, like uh, Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, games like that, none of them will work. Which, I mean, that's probably fine, because those games are dead anyway. Um, but if all you're really gonna do is just play Modern Warfare 2 and COD 4 all the time, then go for it, because they work pretty good. But yeah, if you're gonna play newer games like that, or if you're gonna play like PUBG, you're probably out of luck at least for now uh, like i said apparently valve was working with i think it was battle eye to try to get that working i don't know whatever happened with that but if something like that actually does end up happening then that's cool because then that'll literally open up a ton of new games uh that'll just work some of the other games that do work that i know i'm pretty sure that all the battlefield games work i know battlefield 4 does that's the only one that i have but no one really wants to play Battlefield 1 or 5 anyway, so it's whatever. But uh, if you just want to play some like Battlefield 4 and stuff, that works too. Uh, racing games, as far as I know, all of the ones that I've been able to find work. Uh, there's actually a Humble Bundle going on right now, um, which I'm going to try to get today. But they have a ton of racing games here. So they have Grid Autosport, uh, which actually supports Linux natively. Dirt Rally, which does. Dirt 4, which does. Uh, F1 2018, which works perfectly fine in Proton, and so do these two. So every single game in this bundle works perfectly fine, except for like maybe these two in Linux. 
Um, so I'm kind of hyped to get this because that'll give me a lot more games to play. Uh, but if you play games like racing games and single player games, you probably have a much better chance of, you know, being able to run them fine. So anyway, going into kind of my experience with it, uh, I have been frustrated a little bit trying to get some games to work, but I, that could just be from a number of things, because I see ones that people have 100% gotten working, but for whatever reason, they just won't work for me. And also, right when I installed, I was having some weird issues with like some versions working and some not. Like For example, basically every game, if I used Proton 5, it just wouldn't work. Uh, but that seems to be fixed now. I don't know what it was. Maybe like maybe the files got corrupted for my Proton version or something. I'm not sure. But I had to run them in older versions, which wasn't giving me, giving me like all the new patches and everything. But that seems to be fixed by now. I don't know if it was something with my drivers or something that just needed to get updated. But it all of a sudden just started working. Uh, but going into here, this is Lutris, which is a really good program to uh, to use. Uh, some of the games that I've been able to get running that I was really like surprised by are Need for Speed Heat. That is a pretty much brand new game that just works. I have some older ones too, like Rayman 3, Sonic CD, uh, Mario 64. The PC port is actually easier to get on here than it is on Windows. Through the package manager, there's actually just a package for the Mario 64 PC port. And all you have to do is just go into the files, drag in the... Uh, the ROM and you're good and it like actually gets updated every once in a while whenever uh whenever like something changes on the PC ports github page uh you actually get an update for it so you always get the newest version because I think if you download like the exe off of someone on YouTube they probably have the oldest version uh like right when it came out and yeah because no one's gonna actually compile that themselves um, but yeah, emulating is also really good. I've had a lot of luck with emulators. Um, if I actually open up the uh, PS3 emulator right here, for whatever reason it doesn't work through Lutris. Um, but I actually have my PS3 right next to me. I have custom firmware on it, so I was able to dump Gran Turismo 5, and the game works. It, it, it sometimes crashes, but that's probably just an issue with the emulator itself, not Linux. Um, but I've had a lot of luck running emulators on here. Pretty much every single one of them I've tried works, except for, uh, it's called Xenia. It's the Xbox emulator, or uh, the Xbox 360 emulator which is still in very early stages, like it barely works on Windows too, uh, but it doesn't have a native Linux port so you have to run it through Wine and it's a little bit weird. But you can see here I just got uh, Gran Turismo 5 opening up, and I actually get better performance on emulators through Linux than I do on Windows, just because there's less overhead, there's less stuff running in the background. Don't know why that's in Japanese, I think it's because I used the, uh, the game configuration, right? I did not mean to do that, I meant to change it, but uh, yeah, let me look, yeah, Japanese, okay, that's why, but yeah, emulating is really good, so if you're gonna play old games, that's fine, but uh, sorry if I'm kind of rambling, there's just a lot of stuff that I want to talk about, but overall, I've had a lot of good luck with it, I only have like maybe four games that I just haven't been able to get working, or that I still play that I have to just run through the uh, virtual machine. But I would definitely recommend trying it out. If you have a USB drive, all you have to do is just install Linux on it, which basically you just burn an ISO onto the drive, plug it in and boot from it. You could actually just like mess around and you might be able to play some games on it through that, but I wouldn't recommend it because uh, it would probably be very slow loading off of a USB drive. Uh, but you could at least mess around with Linux through a USB drive and kind of like get a feel for it and see if it's what you want. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it for a lot of people just to try it out because it is nice uh, having something that's different from Windows and it actually runs a lot smoother than Windows um, and it's a lot more customizable. Like you see, this is what my desktop looks like, but you could get different desktop environments. So uh, you can get things like GNOME, which uh, has more of a... It's kind of more of a Mac styling. It's kind of its own thing, but if I wanted to put it towards something, it would probably be more Mac-like. Uh, you could get Elementary OS, which is literally Mac, um, or you can get something like super lightweight that kind of looks like it's from the 90s, like LXD or something. Yeah, you just have a lot of like customizability, 
and you could change a lot of things. You could basically do whatever, and you can get some really cool looking stuff. Like if I open up a terminal here, uh, just by control, yeah, right here, you see it's like see-through. It's kind of blurred a little bit, but there's just a lot of customization you can do, and it looks really nice, um, but definitely would recommend. But that's about it for the video. Sorry if I rambled a little bit. There were just a lot of things I wanted to talk about. Also, this video is being edited completely on Linux. Uh, the software that I use, it's called Olive, and it's a pretty good editor. It's probably the closest to what I'm used to on here, but also if you make YouTube videos, that's something you could try out. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video at all, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Like I said, I would highly recommend just throwing this on a USB drive and trying it out. You don't have to actually install it, you can just try it. So there's really no harm in doing it. And uh, I don't know, it's just something to do, I guess, while uh, everyone's kind of stuck at home. But uh, yeah, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Secrets and all of my woes You took all of my songs I'm on the road